you know, we're we're on the right track. We don't have every last little thing figured out, but um, it's 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 pretty solid. We can see that progression, and the more we look, the more we find those little intermediaries from from our current state to our past state, um, like uh, Neanderthals and uh, Australopithecus and all the different pre-humans that um, are definitely not like we are today. Um, and you just look at some of those uh, precursors to humans uh, that you can look up pictures online. Um, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 years ago, um, even way less than like a million years ago, we looked completely different as a species. Um, it, it's crazy. You can see us evolving right now. In fact, if you want, you can look up a news story. Human beings on the earth today, this is small and weird, but it's, it's, uh, it's evolution. Um, some of us are growing a new vein in our arms. Um, why? I don't know. Um, but there are people who are having like this extra vein that nobody else has. Um, and it's like a genetic evolutionary thing. Um, and basically one of two things is going to happen. Either it's, well, one of three things. Either it's not going to do anything at all and it's not going to matter. Or the people that have that extra vein are somehow going to be a little bit better off. Maybe they're less likely to have heart attacks or their blood circulates better and they can become better athletes. Um, or it's the opposite and that extra vein causes problems. They have blood flow problems. They don't live as long. They don't reproduce as often. Um, and so you kind of see that happening. Uh, again, I kind of get to chemistry, but um, y'all know that like Michael Phelps has different genes. Oh, yeah. um, like, like literally his DNA is different. It allows his body to consume calories and recover from workouts at a different rate than other people. Um, and they've identified this gene and not all of them, um, but a, a higher percentage of, of like world-class athletes have this gene than like the normal population uh, yeah, because it gives you like specific uh, advantages in, in physical uh, areas. So, um, you know, huh? So he's just basically built different. Yeah, literally. So like you, you can look like if you're a swimmer and you're like, I, I can't I can't get to like the Michael Phelps level. Um, you have a legit like he legitimately has tools that you don't have, um, which makes him better at, at doing the swimming thing. Um, and so, yeah. And it's the same way with every sport. There's advantages. Uh, you know, some people are taller. Some people are, are just have different muscular structure um, and that helps them out. I didn't know this, but the other day I was watching a, a compilation of uh uh, Usain Bolt, um, he was not winning races until like his mid twenties. Um, you know, the whole compilation started out and the first like five or six races when he was 19, 20, 21, 22, uh, he was like in the mix, but he was not winning races. Um, at least not the national competitions. Um, and it wasn't until he like fully fleshed out and became like a fully, uh, you know, grown man. Um, that his body started to fit his his height and his shape. Um, as you can see, he's way taller than everybody else. Um, and so it took him a while to get to the point where that height advantage and that longer stride actually resulted in faster times. Uh, and so, yeah, everybody's a little bit different, um, you know, and, and some people that are different are going to end up, uh, you know, taking advantage of that and reproducing more children and their children will pass that on. Uh, and over, you know, like a million years, who knows what we'll look like as human beings and, uh, how different we'll be, uh, we'll see. Uh, so back on to chemistry. Sorry about still talking about this. What do we got? Like, well, I only got four minutes of the video though. Um, so we're going to review for tomorrow. I don't give y'all paper reviews anymore. First off, I don't give you paper or anything really. Um, these are all up and I'm gonna post them with the video that I'm about to make right now. Um, and I just wanna go over the four sections that we're doing. We're basically all in chapter three for this three weeks. Um, the test tomorrow is only gonna cover this kind of stuff. Um, and so we start off with the development of the atomic theory stuff. This is probably the thing we did the first. Um, so you might have this rolling around in your head a little bit less than the other things. So look up this uh, study sheet. It'll be on Google Classroom. Um, know what the different scientists discovered. Um, you don't have to know the super duper details, um, but know that Democritus had all the atom stuff right. Like he knew about all the atom stuff, basically um, to the point that we know it today, minus the protons, neutrons, and electrons, the subatomic particles. But he had atoms right. He knew about their properties and that there were different atoms for different elements. Um, and then Aristotle came behind and was like, nope, fire, earth, air, water, 
uh, empty space. Um, and so I believe one of the questions asks you, uh, what is the one thing they agreed on? Um, basically, the one thing they agreed on was that there were simple elements that made up everything. Um, Democritus knew that they were more varied than fire, earth, air, and water. Um, but still you could say that fire, earth, air, and water, according to Aristotle, were like elements. They were simple things that, that you could use to create literally everything. Um, and so, um, that's, that's kind of the only thing they agreed on. It wasn't much. Um, then we go to current time where you get Dalton. Dalton brings us back to where Democritus was. Um, he theorizes the atom. Um, that you have different atoms, that they work in whole number ratios, um, and basically everything except for subatomic particles. He doesn't know about electrons, neutrons, protons, or anything like that. Um, then you get J.J. Thompson. J.J. Um, Thompson uh, gives us the cathode ray and discovers the electron by shooting this uh, cathode beam through the tube. Uh, it goes towards the positive plate, so he knows they're negative electrons because opposites attract. Um, and he creates the plum pudding model um, because he loved plum pudding. Uh, and so that gives us our first model of the atom, even though it's wrong. Very shortly after that, Rutherford comes along, um, Ernest Rutherford, and does his gold foil experiment where he shoots positively charged alpha particles at a, a sheet of gold foil. And he expects them to mostly go through because is my particle going to travel through the pudding? Yeah, um, it, it should just shoot right through the pudding. Um, so he expected all of them to go through and maybe a couple of them to deflect. What he didn't expect was that some of them would be stopped by the pudding. Um, it would actually hit it and bounce back out and not go through the foil. Um, and so that told him we don't have a pudding. We actually have solid nuclei. Um, so he's the one that discovered the nucleus. So Thompson discovers the electron. Uh, Rutherford discovers the nucleus um, and the protons and neutrons inside. I don't know if he knew about the neutrons, but... Um, then you get to Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr starts to do, does work, starts to do work on, uh, electrons and discovering their different energy levels and how if you push an electron up, it shoots out a little photon of light. Here's your little photon of light coming out. Um, and, and you can look at the energy levels based on the color of light that comes out. Um, the problem with Bohr was he only did it for hydrogen. Um, and remember hydrogen only has one proton. So it only has one electron. So he's doing very simple work, watching that one electron go up and then come back down. Um, and so he didn't really do anything more complicated than that. And his model, which is the like orbital model, like the planets, um, we know now is not correct. He didn't know it at the time, but it's all right. Um, so that, that's what was wrong with his model. We, we don't know exactly what the electrons are doing. We now know that they're in clouds. Um, and so that's those four people. Uh, Make sure you go back and study this if you're if you're a little bit uh, behind on the four uh, scientists that gave us the model. Then we go to subatomic particles, protons and neutrons. Um, remember that your protons are positive, your neutrons are neutral, your electrons are negative. Um, remember that every single atom has a different number of protons. That's called your atomic number. Um, your atomic number is how many protons you have, and every single atom on the periodic table has a different number of protons. If you change it, you get a different element um, than the one you used to have. Um, there will be at least one problem on uh, on percent composition. So uh, your your average atomic mass, actually not percent composition, your average atomic mass. So remember, they're going to give you the percentages. Um, so like here we have 75.77, 24.23. What do I do to turn the percent into a decimal? Move the decimal twice. So I move the decimal twice to the left, and instead of 75%, I get 0.75%. Instead of 24%, I get 0.24%. Um, I take those numbers, I multiply them by the mass, and they will give you the mass. Um, so you take each mass that works for each one of those, multiply it by that, and then what do I do with my answers there? Add them together. So move the decimal, multiply by the mass, and then add them together and that will give me that average. And remember, your average is going to be somewhere in between the two numbers that they give you. I don't, I can't see what this is. Um, but let's say this is chlorine 35 and chlorine 37. Um, if I take an average of chlorine 35 and chlorine 37, it's going to be somewhere in between 35 and 37. I know that. Um, if I have mostly 35, 
it's probably going to be closer to 35. Um, if I have mostly 37, it'll be closer to 37. But it's got to be somewhere in between them. It can't be more or less than that. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. They, there'll be a couple questions. Like they'll tell you how many protons you have, how many electrons you have, um, and you got to tell them the charge. So just remember, which one do I have more of? Is it protons or electrons? How many more do I have? Is it one, two, three? And then what's the charge of that? If it's protons, it's positive. If it's electrons, it's negative. And my charge will be how many more I have. So if I have three more electrons, it's negative three. If I have two more protons, it's positive two. Um, and so you, you use that number and the charge to figure it out. Uh, let's see. Electromagnetic spectrum. Um, there's a couple questions here about the actual wavelength and frequency stuff. Um, I think I've decided that I'm going to give y'all the, uh, the uh, formulas on the board. I do have these basic formulas on the test, um, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to go ahead and break them down into the format that you will need to use uh, and, and actually put that on the board. Because basically, if you can figure out what they're asking you for, and, and what they give you and figure out what formula to use, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, maybe I'm, I'm not being as, as demanding as I should be, but uh, maybe later at the, the six weeks test or the, the midterm test, I won't give it to you. But for this one, I'll give it to you. Um, and so just, just know that, you know, are they asking me for frequency? Are they asking me for wavelength? And which one are they giving me? Um, what, what formula do I need to use? Um, so I should have those available to you. Um, with frequency and wavelength, you're just dividing. The speed of light will be on top, and then you divide by the frequency or you divide by the wavelength, and it gives you the other one that you don't have. Um, and then we get into the energy questions. Remember that the speed of light, does anybody remember the speed of light off the top of your head? I'll give it to you for the test, but. Three, four, 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 yeah, times 10 to the 8. 3.00 times 10 to the 8. Um, when you get into energy, you use the Planck's constant. And I will give you the Planck's constant too. Um, that's the 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, really, really small number. Um, so for the basic formula, you multiply on this one. You multiply it by your frequency. That gets you your energy. Um, they might ask you to kind of switch it around and get a different formula out of it. Um, but like I said, I'll have those all on the board around here. So if you can figure out what formula to use, uh, you should be good to go there. Everybody will be allowed to use a calculator and a periodic table. Um, no issue with that. Um, so you'll see some of those problems. Again, if you're like, I don't know what to do, go back into your saplings and look at your sapling problems. Um, every single problem on the test has been taken off of one of the saplings, um, more than likely one of the quizzes, because the quizzes are all multiple choice. Your problems on your test are all multiple choice. Um, so it would be good if, if you know one of these, you're like, I don't remember that at all. I, I didn't do very well at that. Go back and look at the quiz. Um, now that the quiz is over, even if you got it wrong, it should show you what the correct answer is. So, uh, yeah. And if you have questions, you can come in during activity period. That's before this class. So uh, I will be here during activity period to answer some questions for you. Um, then we get into electron arrangements. This is the one we did the most recently. So hopefully everybody uh, is, is somewhat fresh on that. Um, on the electron arrangement questions, I will have this image on the test for you. Um, so as long as you can use your periodic table, find the element they're talking about, figure out what row it's in. Is it in 3D? Is it in 4P? Is it in 4F? Wherever it's at. And then count over how many elements you need to get to um, and use this part down here to get you all the way to write it out. Uh, I don't know. Well, it's multiple choice. So you won't have to write anything out. Um, at best, I give you the element you have to figure out which of these is correct, or I give you one of these and you have to figure out what element it is. Um, so there's not going to be any writing on the test. It's all multiple choice. Um, you should have something to pick from, but um, be familiar with that. Maybe take a look at your sheet. Um, remember that S's are two electrons. P is six. D is 10 and F is 14. Um, and if you want, this will be on the test. You can literally just count over one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. This has 10 across. That has 14 across. So you can always just count them out if you don't remember. Um, and then the last thing, which is 
right here. Um, you won't have this on the test, but the dot formulas. So the dot formulas was by far the easiest thing, I think, that everybody do all right on that. Um, if you're still a little confused about it, let me know. But it's just those columns. So like everything in that first column has one dot. Um, everything in the second column has two dots. And you skip over the middle part. You skip over the D block, and you go just to the P block. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, the only thing that's that's off about it, helium will not have eight. It will only have two. Um, it belongs kind of over here next to hydrogen in that second column. So um, that that's kind of how those play out. Uh, that's that's it. That's the end of this one. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna post all four of these study sheets onto Google Classroom along with this video um, as soon as it gets uploaded. And uh, you can go back and look at the quizzes if you kind of want to review a little bit. We're doing, um, actually, let me write it on the board over here. Uh, it's a 3.1 quiz, 3.2 quiz, 3.3, and then 3.4, which we actually, we haven't taken today. We haven't taken yet. Um, but if you want, I'll open it up. And if you want to do it, you can. And if not, uh, you know, it'll be for Monday next week. So not a big deal. Next month. Actually, I want to sign it, but I'll make it visible so you can actually see it. And if you want to, you can go ahead and do it. So, uh, 3.1, 3.2, 3.4, 3.3, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4, 3.4,